Hi, this is Think for Yourself, an introduction to critical thinking. My name is Mark Dorsby, and this course overviews some of the key concepts for good, solid, critical thinking. If you'd like to follow along, we're using a workbook for arguments by David Morrow and Anthony Weston. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So this is our last video series for um, our topic of generalizations. If you've been following along, you know we've been talking a lot about what are some of the pitfalls and some of the things we need to be aware of when we make or evaluate generalizations and generalized claims about things. Um, and it's a lot more difficult than it can sometimes appear. Today we're going to be looking at Rule 11, Consider Counterexamples. That is, one of the things that's really important is the ability to be, when you hear a generalization or you learn of one, is to consider under what conditions that generalized claim might actually be false. So, that is, you have to be skeptical and you have to consider what are the possibilities? So what's a counterexample? A counterexample is really anything that can contradict an argument or a generalization that's given. That is, um, someone says something is the case, they make a generalized claim. They say, for instance, all philosophy professors are good professors, right? Which I love, I love the idea of believing that, but pretty much whenever I hear that claim, I immediately can think of someone I may have taken philosophy with or, or I've heard of other people take philosophy with, where they did not have a good experience, they, wasn't, they were not a good teacher, and so you could say then the original generalization, therefore, is false. Okay, so this is what a counterexample is. It's really just showing that the, uh, when a generalized statement, a generalization, it can be contradicted. Okay, now when you're confronted with the generalization, I think really what you should do is you should ask yourself if you can imagine a scenario in which, the, in which the generalization would no longer follow, okay? So imagine, for instance, this little argument that is made up. Someone says to me, for instance, they say, listen, all men are slobs, Joey is a man, therefore Joey is a slob, right? Joey is a slob. Now, interesting enough, this argument is actually rational. That is, this is a logical argument, right? The question, though, is whether or not these claims, the premises here, whether or not those claims are true. Now, is Joey a man? Maybe, maybe not. We'll take it on faith that Joey is a man, right? But what about this other claim? All men are slobs. Immediately, you'll notice here that we have a quantif quantified statement, right? We're saying that all men are slobs, right? Predicating slobbery to all men. So the question, though, is, is that really true? Can I come up with an example or a counter? Imagine, for instance, someone says, well, wait a second, some men are actually very neat and tidy, like, well, like my Uncle Don, right? So imagine someone says that. Well, here is this, the response here, the counter, is giving an example that actually shows that this first premise is false. Because if all men are slobs, well, Uncle Don can't, Uncle Don must be a slob, but he's not, right? So in other words, the, if you go back to the central argument here, what the counterexample shows is that, well, just because Joey is a man does not mean he is necessarily a slob, right? I think you could certainly say many men are slobs, right? But not all men, right? So when you're doing counterexamples, what you really have to do is you have to have a little bit of imagination um, in order to conjure up these differing possibilities, right? I think, and the other thing that's really, I think, true, in fact, though, is that when you spend time trying to do counterexamples, the, the thinking of the counterexample actually enables a deeper reflection, right? So when I start to, to say, for instance, well, if I try to come up with a counterexample about men being slobs, it starts to raise questions, for instance, like what, who counts as a man exactly? What, what do I mean by men there? Do I mean biology? Do I mean a gender identity, right? Um, on the other hand, right, um, I also think, well, what does it mean for someone to be a slob? Because if Uncle Don is not a slob, then I must have some sort of understanding of what slobbery means, right, and so on and so forth. So when you start to engage in an argument by thinking of counterexamples, it actually is a very, very good sign. It means you're beginning to actually think of it in a deep sense. Now, the book that we're using doesn't talk about this, or at least not at this section, but I thought it worth mentioning here that there is such a thing as creating a counterexample for an argument. In fact, I have a whole long video lecture on this if you want to take a look at it in our Introduction to Formal Logic playlist on the YouTube channel. Right? 
But take a look at the counter example for arguments, right? Sometimes people can give an argument, right? And you can also create a counter example for the argument, not necessarily one of the claims, but for the argument itself. In order to do this, what you have to do is you have to deduce the form of the argument, and then you have to, have to introduce new terms such that the conclusion looks is clearly false, but the premises are true, right? So here's a sort of example I started with. Um, if it's raining outside, then you'll get wet. You're clearly wet. Therefore, it must be raining outside, right? So here's a sort of example. It's not quite the same, but I deduced this form, right? Basically saying, if R, then W, you have W. Conclusion, you must therefore have R, right? Um, now, but I sort of came up with a, an example. It's not quite, doesn't quite fit it, but I think it demonstrates how it is a counter, right? Well, the same argument, it's as if you say, well, if an animal is a mammal, then it, then it is an animal that breathes. A snake is an animal that breathes. Therefore, a snake is a mammal, right? Notice here it has the same structural reversion. You're saying that if this is the case, this is the case. Well, the second thing, the consequence of the case, so it makes you want to think that the antecedent, the thing that comes first, is the case. So you can actually construct counterexamples for whole arguments, too. Um, so counterexamples are really important. We don't spend too much time on them, um, right? We're mainly looking at counterexample of generalizations. So, for instance, if you do, if you want to join us and do the homework exercises that are attached, for instance, you're going to get claims like this, and your goal, your task is to try to construct a counter. So, if you want, take this this statement here: "Mothers know best." Pause the video and see if you can come up with a counterexample to this generalization. Now, hopefully, you did that, but. Imagine someone says mothers know best, right? Well, that's not always the case, right? For instance, in the 1920s, uh, something that many mothers frequently did is if their child was born with a, a, a large birthmark, right, especially if it was on the face or a visible location, many mothers wanted that birthmark removed. And so what they would do is they would go have the birthmark removed by burning it off with radium, which is totally radioactive, right? Now, mothers did this because they thought this was the best thing for their child, their children, but one of the results was is that children, the incidence of cancer, especially uh, facial cancer, things like this, went up. So what it looks like here is, well, mothers don't always know best, right? Or maybe you gave a counterexample, you're like, well, I knew a mother once who smoked cigarettes and... Um, and, you know, was taking crack cocaine while she was pregnant, right? Well, there's an example of a mother who does not know best, right? So there's lots of different counterexamples possible for this sort of generalization. So that's what we're taking a look at. One of the things I encourage you to do is, as you're living life, going online, looking at the news and these sorts of things, and when, for instance, you're um, surfing YouTube, and you hear someone make a big claim, a big general claim, something like, say, for instance, um, all Democrats are big... Uh, big government um, spenders, right? Well, can you come up with a counterexample for that claim? Um, or if someone says all Republicans um, care about are is big business and tax incentives, well, can you come up with a counterexample to challenge that? I can, right? So when you begin to hear these generalizations, you should start to just internally start to come up with counterexamples. And you'll see that this actually one of the few things is trying to come with counterexamples makes you a very, very solid thinker, and it's a great practice and great exercise. Okay, well that is, that concludes our discussion today for Rule 11. Um, um, uh, you should consider counterexamples, and that is Think for Yourself. Join us next time uh, for, we'll be moving on to another set of rules, uh, but it's been a pleasure having you, and I look forward to seeing you guys online. Remember, think for yourself.